So this is one of the videos I probably needed three, four years ago. I've gathered everything up into a full guide and this is a few of the things we will cover this session. I'm gonna go through the gear. Ah, it's called the black box or soft box. The big uh, square thing you have in front of a cinema camera. Then we'll cover the settings, edited version, uh, version uh, and this is the before. So <laughs> I, I would argue that's a pretty nice image. I'll then talk about how you act and how to get in contact with people. Make sure. So if they need some convincing, I'll just go like, I need this to get my job done and it works. So my name is Hans Arne. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is mainly because there's not enough material for people to go after when uh, searching uh, or trying to learn nightclub photography. I've been doing it for professionally, let's say a year, year and a half. I feel I have some insight that might be useful to you. This will be a longer video. Uh, it's gonna be more of a conversation. I have a 10 quick tips uh, on my channel as well if you don't have 30 minutes to spare. I have no idea how long this is gonna be. Don't expect this to take uh, 20 seconds. And if you're already bored by me talking uh, nonsense, uh, put the video to 125 speed or something and I'll have this high-pitched voice and you can scroll through uh, like you do on any social media. Yeah, does that even make sense? I don't know. Now, if there's any cuts or unnatural transitions, don't be surprised because it's probably just me talking in circles and not realizing before, before post-production. Uh, this is a more relaxed video. I don't have a script in the same way. I have started, but it's only the first two topics. According to people, I apparently know what I'm doing, which is then again why I believe I have something to say in this. Uh, I, I shoot like three nightclubs a month twice, three, three, four, five nightclubs a month, a couple of times a month. November, December is really quiet, but still. Uh, and if you're unsure of what I've done, you can visit either my uh, Instagram, my website or my uh, YouTube, uh, and you can see a bit more of my work. I think that was everything said in the introduction. Uh, we'll start about my gear, which I find is the most requested point during a walkthrough like this. So we'll just get it out of the way. This is my main lens, which is a Tamron 28-75 f2.8 lens. It's weather sealed, which is nice for alcohol. Uh, I have a clear glass filter, or this is actually a pro mist filter. Uh, one eighth, I think. Uh, which is great for moody images, but uh, at least something or a UV filter in front of your lens uh, is almost mandatory while shooting nightclubs. This have had uh, alcohol spilled on it, not like a full glass or something, but people are throwing, especially in Norway where I live, it's a very big culture to open the box and just spray it everywhere. So having uh, something that is weather sealed and uh, with a clear glass filter is perfect. Now this ring there, uh, which looks kind of professional, uh, it's actually just for my uh, big, ah, it, it's called a black box or soft box, the big uh, square thing you have in front of a cinema camera. Uh, this is the adapter for that and I actually just never took it off because uh, it gives my lens a bit more resistance to dump bumping and stuff, just keeping it off your legs if you have it like this. It, it, it just looks okay it gives it a bit more protection i don't know it looks cool as well so and that's my lens uh, it's not wide enough i wish it had been like 24 maybe 20 millimeters but 28 is what i have uh, and to compensate for the narrow uh, view uh, i have a 20 millimeter tamron uh, i'm not sure if the it's a prime lens but uh, cheap as Fuck, I think it's like 20, maybe 300 euros. Yeah, so it's very cheap. I do the same thing with a clear glass filter. I rarely use it though, because it's such a hassle to change the lenses during a shoot, because you'll have to go back, because I can't carry anything on me, because it's too crowded, and using a backpack and sling won't work, but we'll go through that later. But uh, 20 millimeters and my then 28 to 75 is the, all of the lenses I've ever used in a nightclub. It does the job. Just You just have to get a bit further away from the subject. Super happy about it. 
Now at the times I have used the 20 millimeters, the images usually turn out pretty damn good compared to the 28, as they sometimes become a bit boring. Uh, but then again, I'm left with this huge limit in in what I can shoot, so I usually just stuck with this one. If I could choose, I would probably go with a 11 to 20 millimeter Tamron f2.8 lens and the Tamron 17 to 28 lens. So you have the 11 to 20, which is like super distorted artistic style vibe. Uh, and then you have the 17 to 28, which is a more like normal wide angle lens for my type of shots. Because the venues I'm shooting don't have any far away areas to shoot or a stage that is far away. So I never really use the zoom range at this one. So 28 is more than good enough. If you are at like a concert or something, I would probably go with the Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter, which is probably the next lens I'm gonna buy. Not for, for nightclub photography necessarily, but still. And if I could pick like super freely uh, without any budget, I would probably just for go for some of the G Masters 16 to 35 or the something to 24 millimeters G Masters, which are great lenses, but Tamron beats the shit out of G, G Master lenses every single time when it comes to price and quality. So I'm gonna go with Tamron every single day of the month and we can move on to my camera is the Sony a7 III, I've had it for years. It's a camera, the image quality is okay, it has okay megapixels, the video is okay, the rolling shutter is, nobody cares in my opinion, like I see all these reviews on the internet about rolling, I don't get it, but then I'm not that professional either. So it's a camera, It's it was top of the line for a few years when I had it, but now it's rather down there and it's pretty cheap as well. So I would highly recommend the Sony a7 III. I wouldn't as much recommend the Sony a7 II because that's quite far down there actually now. Uh, maybe an R2 or some, I'm not entirely sure to be honest. The Sony a7 III with the capabilities it has. I just use the manual mode anyways. I don't know, it needs to have an external flash uh, compatibility. Uh, yeah, it has dual SD card slots, which is uh, extremely uh, practical to have because then I don't have to worry about losing my images. And it also has a live LCD uh, display which makes it super easy to frame shots because I never used a viewfinder on my camera. So that's like the three things I need. I might sound so dumb now, ha dumb now having an expensive camera not understanding what I have. But yeah, it works. Does the job. And if I could choose any other camera, I would choose the Sony a7 IV. So not that big a jump, really. Now just to clarify, like what, what type of camera you have doesn't really matter that much. ISO, which is... Okay, so this is Hunt from uh, Post Processing. What I was trying to explain here is that every camera is basically the same, except for how high you can rise the ISO without the image getting muddy in a way or noisy. Uh, and that's at the very end affected by your budget. So I was trying to explain that you just have to buy for what you have. Set the budget as high or low as possible, work with that and reinvest what you're making or save up some more cash than sell the camera. Because uh, every camera is basically the same except the ISO and then the other three things I mentioned. Okay, so next thing is the T3 flash thing. Uh, while writing this, I realized that I've been shooting, I wouldn't say wrong, but I've shooting misunderstood for a while, which is kind of funny. So I used the Godox TT350 uh, and when I started out, I really just went out experimenting. My images, uh, as I showed in my previous videos, went from this to this after just understanding the different flash settings. And I, for both images, used this flash. Uh, I realized, realized I've been using the multi-mode, which to me was the most convenient one because it because uh, it gave me clear numbers. So as you see here, it's very much like 128, 164, 1 over 1, uh, and so on. Which is just what I needed uh, at the time and it gave me great images. What I didn't realize is that a regular flash would go off like this. Uh, and this one, uh, a multi-mode, actually does several flashes 
in one image. So you use a lower shutter speed and you go like this. So this is six flashes in one image. Now I didn't know this because my settings were obviously set to one flash per uh, shutter. So it works as it should, but it's wrong. So I was using just a different type of manual mode in my opinion. Because you have the manual mode and you have the TTL. I found them, I found the manual mode to be just a bit difficult to work with because it's diff harder to memorize. And the TTL mode it just gave me varying results because I couldn't memorize what I needed to, to use in that certain situation because the flash would behave differently each time. Because the TTL mode uh, shoots one then fixes the exposure and then shoots another flash for the image. Makes sense? Yeah. So I just ended up with basically multi-mode on one image, one flash per image, and it worked fine. And that's every single image I've taken or that is on my portfolio is taken with the multi-mode. Uh, and then I would just memorize how uh, I would go through uh, inside a group of two people. I would have one over 64 because it was f rather close. If I went inside, I would just memorize, I'll have to tilt the flash from this to this position uh, and have one over 32. And then uh, outside, I would even go lower as to like 116 or something, if it was like bigger group project. And back at just portraits at 164 and 32, which was what I used the most. Uh, so that was perfect for me because for the three regular situa situations you had, uh, close uh, portrait group photo and outside there was like three different ways or like numbers so really practical uh, the essence of this whole thing is just that you need to practice and you need to figure out what to uh, what you find most reliable or and constant uh, through every image because I needed to know when taking the images that the exposure would be right one of the points I had in my previous video was that you can't fix some fix something in post, uh, but you don't get the second chance either while taking the pictures usually. So having these memorized for the certain or different situations makes your life so much easier. Uh, TT350 is, I think it's the smallest flash you'll get out there or some of the most smallest flashes. It, uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that uh, with the Sony ones, it doesn't have uh, it's not compatible or whatever it's called with the red A autofocus system which is normal on some flashes so in certain dark scenarios it would be really hard to to get focus and I would have it doesn't happen that often but I will have some blurry images once in a while which is very disappointing uh, apart from that uh, a big th trigger point for some I think is my diffuser uh, and how I use the flash this is my diffuser. It's literally just a regular plastic cap, which you get with everything. I also have these, uh, which I guess is okay. I never use them. Uh, and I do something that is frowned, up, frowned upon in certain uh, areas, but I never bounce the flash off the ceiling. That's something I tried to do before. And it doesn't work to bounce the flash off a, a usually black ceiling. It just doesn't work. Uh, and it's too unpredictable because you're running around and suddenly there's different uh, ceilings, it's darker, it's different colors, just dumb. So I would start by just doing it like this and it was okay and I would turn it, tilt it halfway down and it was okay and then I would go, eventually I would end up like this. This is usually how I have it on my camera for regular portraits or smaller group uh, pictures. Now it bounces a lot off to the ceiling and the walls, but it also gives you quite a lot for the subjects. Now I'll, I'll go through in a second why that's not a big deal. Uh, some says the, the light is too harsh, but as I said, again, this is for, for social media. This is not like some advertisement for a car company or anything, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and for group photos, I would just do like this and I'll set it to 132 and it would do perfect, just fine. There are harsh lighting in some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. And the, the time it saves me and the amount of shots it saves me to just uh, find a wall there and maybe calculating it and then 
some will be correctly exposed because they're closer to and then these will just point it at them honestly i know it's like a unpopular move but fuck you now before we leave the topic of the flash i think it's nice to clarify what i mean by the harsh lighting and stuff so this is my website this is my nightlife portfolio and all of these images was shot with this flash in either this position or this 45 degree position uh, these first ones you see uh, of a concert is uh, in a 90 degree position at 116 or something like that very bright light and there are some bright areas here but the images are perfect to me they are flawless almost then when it comes to lighting and flash you can complain works a charm uh here there are some lighting on our forehead nothing really happening here nothing here the this image for example is shot in a 45 degree angle at 164 i would guess and at a very low shutter speed maybe 120th one something yeah this i believe is shot quite far away than cropped so probably a shutter or like a flash like this at 132 maybe it's a quite f long time ago and this is as well yes he's very bright and he's very white here mainly because i didn't care to fix it secondly it doesn't look bad uh, and they stand out compared to the background so it worked out perfectly just as it should the only bad examples i found were this image where her forehead is quite bright now, uh, due to my work, I do a bit of uh, uh, old pictures restoration, so I could easily remove this, I believe, uh, but it, I don't care to. It takes time, it's unnecessary, nobody cares, it's for Instagram. So, then you have this one as well, her forehead is quite bright. Yeah, the images are posted, people are happy. So that's the main point as well. These are as a, these are shot in forty five degrees. This one is, this one is, this this uh, this one. I think is a bit brighter, but still forty five degrees, because it's shot from above. Uh, yeah, this is my website. If you want to go check it out, you can. There's nothing really you can interact with except seeing my images. But you do you. Uh, for for the batteries I use, uh, I think these are pretty expensive. The and the low and the loop pro, uh, AAA or AA batteries, uh, they're rechargeable. It's I bought four, and I've had them for two years or something. They work fine. The recharging time on this, you see this uh, orange thing, is so fast. You can click forever, and now obviously at lowest power on this one. Oh no, it's actually not. Anyways, so buy uh, expensive batteries, uh, you can recharge with a charger, it's definitely relevant when, when shooting nightclubs, especially since the flash will usually go off like this, faster than this, when I, especially when I'm taking pictures. Uh, so, new batteries, I'll go through why later. And with all of the big things out of the way, we have uh, my secondary camera, which is the Sony CV-1. Uh, never used it on a nightclub, don't know how it performs, but I thought if my camera ever dies, because I had have had some issues with it in the past, uh, something camera-like would be nice to have just to get a few shots done, because uh, usually the nightclubs I shoot is an hour away, which makes it impossible to come up with something or get home and get some new gear. Uh, then I have uh, just something from, I think this is Wish, it's just a memory car card holder. Uh, yeah, always bring extra memory cards in case some of them decides to shut down. Never happened to me. I don't know why it happens to everyone else. I've been shooting for since I was 14. Yeah, anyways, uh, then I have my battery grip. Uh, looks hella cool. It looks professional. As I said in my previous video, it's a good thing to look professional because people take you more seriously as long as you don't act like a jerk while doing so. So this one is a nice thing. Uh, and instead of those big ass diffusers uh, that some people use, that makes you look like you took your home studio with you to the, to the nightclub, this one is like a middle ground. And it also makes you forget about using batteries because it lasts all night. 
yeah, have, if you have it, then use it. I, I tried using it using a cage uh, once just because it would look cool, but it was just in the way. Yeah. Uh, then I have this. It's a pen with uh, for cleaning stuff. Rarely ever use it. I don't care about dust and stuff on my lens while I'm in a nightclub, unless it's very apparent in the images. Like, again, nobody care. It takes time. Of course, it's gonna get dusty. I've had some great images shot while the screen or the, the lens have been all fogged up because I've been going outside, inside, outside, and it'll get these diffused, smoky vibes. So it doesn't really matter as long as it's not super bad dirt. I never really clean my lens before I get home. Uh, then we have a sling. I don't have it right here, but it's to have around you. Uh, there's a few reasons for this. Uh, first of all, it's just nice when you're having a break to have your camera somewhere else than in your hand. I would somehow sometimes have a, like a wrist sling, but when I was doing something else, it would be in the way or I, I would have to set my camera somewhere and it was a hassle. Uh, second thing is when I'm going, I will, I will usually shoot a few bars at, uh, the, at the same night. So I'll have to go uh, among people outside in the street. So having this extra level of security, if someone, someone were to run and grab your camera, you would be able to have uh, like a towing battle or something. So it works nice there and uh, it's nice to have around your hand as well. And if you get bumped or something, it won't fall off. I rarely have it around my neck because it's not long enough and it's a hassle, but I'll have it over my shoulder, uh, somewhere around my arm. And when I'm outside, I'll have it uh, behind my back and stuff. So a sling is not vital, but it's nice to have. And one last thing, like either you can use these, which I rarely ever use, uh, or you can use your phone, which I use sometimes when I'm doing some video shooting. Because in the worst places or dark corners of, uh, or at the back of the crowd, it would usually be very dark. And I would just go up with my phone like this and light them and then record doing some dumb moves. Because yes, the image looks artificial and it looks a bit weird, but in a short lineup of cuts, it doesn't really matter. So it's convenient, really. Then I also use a power bank sometimes for everything in case I need it. So that was all my camera gear. Now when it comes to uh, traveling with this, you would probably expect a big camera bag. And yes, I did use it for a while. The only thing is that in my own city, I feel quite safe going around with a camera bag because it's very apparent that it's at least something gear related. Uh, but this is what I've ended up using in the bigger cities, which is in my case, Kisansan, where I don't feel as safe. And that's mainly because the walk to my car is a lot longer and it's through the main streets and then away from the main streets because uh, I can't park all the way up to the venues. Uh, and going through, yes, there's a lot of police, but there's a lot of dark alleyways as well. So this one, I, I'll usually just pack a smaller camera bag, like handheld camera bag, and put it into this. And it looks like a regular backpack, which makes uh, your target on your back, literally, a bit smaller and more anonymous. For this section, I'll just give you a few, I guess, example of images with different settings. I'll literally just go through my uh, Lightroom catalog from one of the nightclubs slash concerts uh, I shot a few weeks back uh, to show you what my settings were really. So you have some idea of where my fabulous images come from. Uh, for example, this image, uh, I'll go to develop. We have uh, ISO 2500. We have 28 millimeters, which is the widest I could get with my lens, f4 and 1 50th of a second. So a few things you can note about this. The background is fairly lit. It could have been a bit brighter. The shutter speed is a bit high, I, I believe. Uh, the breezer and the CB beer is not removed yet because that's something I do in the next process after exporting from Lightroom. I'll take them through Photoshop and uh, remove all of the alcohol or at least the logos. Uh, some uh, areas are super strict, so you can't have any alcohol in the images at all, which is a real big issue, uh, but I've managed over time, and in my home city, it's not a big deal. 
as long as there's no logos, you can post, post everything you want. So this uh, I'll remove uh, afterwards. This is okay, because it's not like uh, served. It's a whole thing. Uh, the lighting is perfect. Now this is back to why the settings is so important and you can save your images in post. So this is my edited version, uh, version uh, and this is the before. So <laughs> I, I would argue that's a pretty nice image in camera. This is a nice image. There's a lot of things happening. The colors are okay. The skin tones are perfect. Uh, there's no big, f you have this guy in the background, uh, but he's not close enough. These people are looking away, so those won't be like part of the picture, which makes this perfect, because these have both agreed to be taking pictures of. Does that make sense? Uh, let's see the before. That's the before, that's the after. So not much done in this case either. So when I show these people this image, they'll be super stoked and people around it will see it, as I mentioned either earlier or previously. Uh, no, either earlier or later on. Uh, super cool, I haven't checked this in a while either. Let's go back to the library, find another setting. Uh, this had an ISO of 2528 millimeters, f5. Uh, one fiftieth of a second. I'll show you some of my bad ones as well, or that I'm not that happy with. So we have this concert image. Uh, it's a cool image. There's a lot of things happening, but I'm not super fond of the colors here. Uh, I've done some local adjustments, I would guess. Uh, somewhere I have. Uh, but we can see the before. So only bump the colors and contrast quite a bit because it's a concert image. I don't know, I don't love it, but the most important thing is the skin tones on our main subjects and the fact that people are actually watching. Because in some nightclubs, people aren't watching the guy singing and it looks very cheap in a way. So finding the right images there are important, uh, is important. This, for example, is... I tried getting the colors in their faces right, but it looks so bad. Uh, so I didn't really master this setting. Now this is a perfect example of an extremely good image that is ruined by this alcohol. Like her face, obviously, but uh, <laughs> the alcohol is the biggest issue. So this I would probably crop. I would probably send it like this because I know the guys taking care of it would have to crop out the the alcohol by himself, but it will probably go on social media like this or something with a logo or some text. So just knowing how everything is uh, is used is a big deal. Let's see, like this. Uh, let's see the before. Looks pretty nice. The after. Before, after. So you can basically almost just deliver this image. And I've made some small light adjustments. Yes, so this one. This one is a great example of me experimenting with different settings. Let's go to the develop page and see the ISO is 1600, 28 millimeters. It's not wide enough. Uh, or Yeah, it's pretty wide as well because I've cropped it. Uh, and uh, one over one, uh, one tenth of a second of a shutter speed. So that's very low. Now the reason this works uh, is because of the flash is so strong. So I would probably have maybe 116, 132 uh, flash uh, like uh, this uh, pointed straight at them because in this image I'm standing on the stage with my artist besides me and then I'll shoot down at these people. And you see like it's blurry uh, and sharp here. Doesn't matter, it's going on social media. The colors are great. Let's see the before. It looks all right. The flash was too weak, but I didn't know. I did the rough pre predicament of this, but already in camera, this looks great, even though it's a bit dark. And then I just brightened it up and gave it some colors. Here is some images of a DJ, uh, where I also was experimenting with one tenth of a second. Uh, and this looks really good, actually. This is one of the better ones. I had a really harsh or big uh, power on my flash, so the skin tones are the, the, the light around him is completely eliminated when it's hitting his face because of my flash. 
but all of the surrounding areas are affected by the red light so I don't have any of the bad ones here but this is me just going shooting tens, 10 images uh, in one burst gambling that some of them look good and they did here you have a, a good example of uh, my lens being full of fog uh, and the filter going in and out and it gives this like misty smoky vibe and with a strong enough flash this looks just as good as, as everything else uh, here as well i have one over one thirteenth of a second over shutter speed which is really low uh, and 1200 iso f5 let's see the before uh, that looks all right uh, and after looks great in my opinion most even though these are pretty good it's important to note that this is usually uh, this is trash it's such a bad image i didn't deliver this uh here are some of my images like yes they're artistic and stuff but they didn't work out so all of these you all of the images images you see here are already starred and selected uh looks really freaking good but a lot of them are also very bad there's so many bad images uh this i could I guess it could work in some settings. I love, I actually like this a bit because the artists are pretty clear and every, this is a nice image. I didn't, I don't, uh, anyways. <laughs> uh, not all of them are good. This is like, okay, it's mediocre. I didn't send this either, I'm pretty sure. This, it's okay, it's almost there. It's, this is a bit of a useless image in my opinion opinion so there, as i said uh, there, there's a lot of experimenting going on with images like this getting the nice effect uh, and then once in a while you get really good images like this one except this girl uh, and then i was super lucky and got images like these uh, after experimenting the whole night so really just comes down to taking a lot of images, trying a lot of different stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, this would be an outside image. And I think this, if we just go... Yes, you see. So the before image is practically the same thing as the after image. Super easy to show these girls the images. Uh, and then uh, uh, make them happy or whatever. Here we have a selfie, which is super common. I guess I take like one every night now. I never request them, but people always do. So those are super fun. I have them on my website as well, just cause it's cool. It's funny. And this is taking on a 20, it's actually taking on 29 millimeters. So it's more than wide enough if you stretch your hand and, uh, out. Uh, and I guess that's everything I need you to know. Yeah, as you see, the shutter speed are quite low. This one is a cool image. Let's see, develop. I don't have it, obviously. You have to experiment in different ways. Uh, as you see, most of my images are, I wouldn't say the same, but they're very similar. It's people posing to the camera. It's usually what sells. It's usually what people like. You see, I love this effect here. This is me going like this with the camera while taking the picture. And it gives this extremely nice natural blur to the whole thing. Now I'll just go uh, really quick through my settings on my camera, uh, all of the small things, uh, just to get a better understanding of what I'm using. There's nothing special, uh, but uh, I guess this is a full guide. So uh, I have my grids off. Uh, I don't use it. You don't have time to check it. My focus area is basically just a flexible spot, medium size, so I can uh, choose what points to uh, focus on. I'm lucky to have a touch point or just an easy joystick on my camera. It's usually just in the middle, but sometimes uh, I'll move it around just to focus on certain light points if it's very dark, but it's very rare I do that and now this has caused me a bit of issues because i've moved the focus point around without knowing so when i pull the focus while taking pictures of a group it's blurry because i've been focusing up in the corner so this is a bit of a gray area i don't know but i usually just keep it in the middle 
Uh, let's see, I don't use any auto exposure modes, so it doesn't really matter what I use. I shoot in 3x2 because it gives me the most information. Steady shot is on. Depends on what camera you have, if you have like in-camera stabili stabilization on your camera. But it's very useful when I'm having my hands up here and shaking a lot. Then it's auto white balance uh, flash. Makes sense. Uh, picture profile, uh, memory cards, no. And then obviously I use the rear sync uh, flash, which isn't displayed here. Uh, we can cross this out. This is what my display usually looks like with this one. Uh, let's see, medium burst. Uh, if you do anything higher, your memory cards, uh, first of all, the storage in camera storage runs out really quickly. And uh, it takes time for you to either show the, the guests what images you've taken, or it just takes time for you to double check your images. So I usually, usually keep it at mid, because then it gives you a click, 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 click vibe. Uh, but I have done a lot faster and uh, for some reason it also caused me problems where my camera would shut down and I'm not entirely sure why but I would have it on high or high plus and the camera would just go all black. So I'll take a few pictures and it will die. And so, uh, so medium is fair. Autofocus continues. If you keep it on single focus uh, you'll really struggle because your camera will go so much back and forth because there's so high speed work it's a high speed work environment so i just keep it on autofocus continuous it was all right it's a bit frustrating because you can't pull focus on the light and then go back in the same way because it'll try it'll lose focus yeah but when it's a fairly lit area it's all right it works fine a uh, large flexible spot again i focus before white balance and that's about it. I obviously shoot raw. You can't do nightclub photography without shooting raw. And these are also my usually uh, go to settings in any scenario. So 1 50th of a shutter speed for portraits or whatever without any artistic vibe to it. F4, F5, F6, usually F4. If you use F2.8 or F1.8, you'll never get the shots you want and the focus will never be on the eyes. Because if they're supposed to, if you want them on the eyes, you'll have to be very specific with a smaller flexible spot, then it's just going to be a mess. So just don't do that. F4 is fair. Everyone tells you the same, so listen to them, including me. And then ISO of 2500. I would even sometimes go up to 5, 6000 because it doesn't matter because it's going on Instagram. Uh, and that's about it. Cheers. We have now covered basically everything when it comes to gear. I believe if you have any questions, uh, I'll answer them below. And now this next section is what I would argue is the most important one, which is how to act. I'll leave a link in the description for a different video. I'll also talk about it at the end, where I basically review another person filming himself in the nightclub and then explaining what he's doing right and what he's doing wrong. Because I believe my way of behaving in the nightclub is a bit different to the, or at least the American culture of photography. Uh, and I saw a few things that he could definitely, or those people could definitely improve. Anyways, uh, I'll go through really quickly. Uh, when it comes to your camera, how to behave around your camera, uh, keep it, never keep it like waist down unless you're very comfortable and aware of your surroundings. I usually keep it up here. I'll rest it on my shoulder or something or keep it up back here. It's really the most convenient way to avoid getting your camera bumped into. If somebody ever bumps into your camera, it's not their fault. It's a nightclub. People expect to bump into each other, so you can't get mad at them. If they hit your flash or they spill alcohol, it's your responsibility and risk to be aware of those situations. Of course, if you're taking an image of people and they, uh, for some reason, throw alcohol at you then. But yeah, don't expect your camera to get uh, wet or uh, full of alcohol and then just deal with it from there. Uh, as I said, use a sling or something and you'll avoid getting kicked. I rarely ever give my camera away. I usually see uh, if, if it's on the dance, flo dance floor, I never do it. If it's by the bar and it's a quiet area and they want to take a picture of either me or their friend, I usually let them do it. Uh, whether if they're 
sober enough basically or if they're able to hold the camera because it makes uh, it leaves tension or it avoids tension uh, people are happy your camera can survive a fall to the ground the, ri- the rods of them missing it it's so low if if at all you're if you're super scared you can just hold in the sling while they're using the camera in case something happens they're not gonna run away with it it's in a nightclub you'll easily take them down take them down uh, and people are just happy to have tried the camera and <sighs> yeah it's not like don't act like it's your precious little baby and the drunk people don't deserve touching it or something it's when people want to try, I let some people have selfies and stuff, and I'll never use the images because they're always trash, but it makes them feel great. So, enough about that. Uh, there's also a few people that says like, oh, I'm a photographer, let me take some pictures for you. Oh, I can hold it and you can go do... No. I think those are the worst. I usually don't give them the chance to take on the... Because especially it's like, oh, I'm studying photography. Those are usually the worst photographers I know. That might be a controversial opinion, but... Those who study it don't really... <laughs> Anyways, it's probably just my ego. Now when it comes to the whole behaving thing in the nightclub, it's one of, one of the most vital parts to getting more work, getting consistent work, and people not seeing you as a creep. Uh, and I believe those are three pretty important things. Uh, when I started out as a photographer, first I wasn't confident in my pictures. I wasn't confident... I was confident talking to people, but not taking pictures of them because I was not sure if it's going to turn out good. So I was very uh, reserved. I would be quieter. I would kind of sneak pictures of people. I would be more awkward and silent while taking the pictures. So I'll just go like... And that was it. And that's super uh, soulless, boring awkward it doesn't work so uh, what i'll do right now it's probably this is not that cool but i'll go like click 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 that's sick that's sick and then i'll leave Uh, and it's a completely different vibe and so there's a a lot that goes into small movements uh, in your face in your hands in the way you take your pictures So we'll go through them step by step uh, and hopefully it will help you and I won't be too disorganized because there's a lot to cover and I believe everything has an important to a certain degree. So uh, yeah, put this to 1.5 speed or something on your YouTube and we'll dive into it. So first one is stay happy and organized and energized. So when you meet people, you want to smile, you want to look them in the eye, you want to shake their hands, you want to go... Hey, buddy, yeah, what up? Oh, you're the photographer, super cool, blah, 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 blah. Uh, They are drunk, they're easy to interact with, they're happy, usually. Uh, So just play along with them, don't act out, just act with them. Uh, I find it super fun talking to people, and then I'll be like, yeah, you need a picture, I should take your portrait, let me make some money, my boss uh, pays me well if I get you in the frame, oh, you look great, it, I'll make so much money if I can get some pictures of you, blah, blah, blah. If if there's a particularly like slow group or a table where they're like talking, I would sometimes come up, especially in the bars, all the people I go like, my boss pays me to, to take these pictures and there's not a lot of people here. Do you want a picture? <laughs> so I'm kind of shaming them going like, I get paid if I get your picture, do you mind? And some people mind, especially the older ones. And a lot of them are like, yeah, sure, I guess you can take a picture. So if they need some convincing, I'll just go like, I need this to get my job done and it works. So there's a few tricks you'll pick up uh, on how to approach. Sometimes I'll just go like, uh, picture and it's usually what I need. Or I'll just point at the camera and hit their legs or something and it's more than enough. So certain ways, but as long as you're smiling and happy, and if they reject, you just go like, yeah, no problem. Uh, And if there's a lot of people, sometimes I'll say like, I'll probably forget and I'll come back, but just say no again. And they'll go like, yeah, great, great. So they don't feel like I purposely went back again when they were drunker or something. Does that make sense? There's a whole lot of like nuance to how to treat people. But stay energized. Then we have a dress accordingly. It's the point in my 10 tips as well. You don't dress up in a suit 
uh, you don't dress uh, down either. So I usually go, I would go in something a bit more fancier like than this or fancier. Uh, yeah, different cleaner. Uh, like I was going out to a party uh, where I would expect to get alcohol on my clothes. Does that make sense? So it's not like a Christmas table, but it's, yeah. Yeah. So dress like everyone else. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, don't waste their time. So this is a big one and it really comes with time that you don't waste their time. And that's just knowing your settings, knowing the pictures. What I didn't do at the start was check after each picture, which I now do. So I'll take like three or four pictures, go, like, yeah, that's great. Check the pictures, pictures really quick. The group is going away. If I see like this has great potential, but the image is trash, I'll go back and be like, I'm so sorry. The image turned out super bad. Can I get another one? And nine out of 10 times it's uh, enough. And they were, like, yeah, sure, sure, of course. Because I didn't go like, oh, I need another one because it doesn't make sense. I just went like, I fucked up really bad. You look great. Can I get a new one? And it, it's a nicer way of getting a new picture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, usually the pictures are okay. And then I'll check after each picture just to see. Uh, and maybe I'll sometimes wait if I'm super unsure of the conditions. I'll be like, hold on a second. And then either go like, yeah, that's fucking great. Thank you for waiting. Or... I need to take another one, it was shit. And those like subtle ways, subtle ways of having them wait makes them not feel awkward in a way. Because if they're posing uh, and I'll just keep the camera up, checking images, going back, wait, wait, it'll gradually get more and more fake and they will feel like they want to get out of there because people are watching them post. Because for most, it's quite uncomfortable. Uh, so. Talking with them, keeping the camera up when you're taking a picture and down when you're not makes them more comfortable. So say you're taking pictures, then you check, then you go down because then they won't be posing and not understanding. For some, it's really important to look nice on images and for them to not know when they're being taken images off is a big deal. Yeah, does that make sense? Keep your camera down when you're not taking pictures. And this is also when people are walking around or you're standing by the dance floor, keep your camera down here or down here, like very obviously not taking pictures until you're going up there, because then, then people don't feel watched in the same way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, let's see, next step. Uh, 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 yeah, this comes with uh, some of the other ones, but it. my point is de-escalate and informalize. It's not a big deal, nobody cares. I'll usually show them the pictures. Some photographers don't, uh, and I never really understood that. But I think it might be an American thing or something, because most in Norway, at least, are like, yeah, that's great, uh, and especially girls. But in some other countries, they say that if you show them the images, they don't want the images published, like they look ugly or the flash is too bright or something. To me, that just either tells me that your images doesn't look that good in RAW, like in camera, which to, is already a bad sign. Or people in other countries are just very insecure. I thought Norwegians were. Anyways, so this comes as well. I, can't, I couldn't do that at the start because the raw images would look super trash, like dark and muddy and brown. But now I've fixed the, the shutter settings and the flash settings, so everything is perfect. And the images are... When I edit my images, it's just like a bit of exposure mainly. So I can show them and that makes uh, as well people more interested in being taking pictures of. So when I go into a smaller venue, I'll take some pictures and I'll show it to them because everyone looks at me when the flash is going off. And if they see the people being taken pictures of smiling, going like, oh, that's fucking sick, which is usually the, the reaction, then this like <laughs> unconscious vibe of okay the photographer is okay goes through at least the nearest people so when i ask them later on in the evening they're like yeah sure we can be taking pictures so, so i hope that makes sense in some way so if they know it's some professional or images that actually look good then they're more happy to be taking pictures of it's a whole thing so for me who's shooting the same nightclubs weekend after weekend or like every other weekend the same people are going to be there and they will see, see the pictures on the social media. 
So if they're bad, they won't be taking pictures of the next time, which means I'll deliver less, and then it just goes worse and worse and worse. I feel like I'm just rambling. Anyways, and something else that is also, I wouldn't say frowned upon, but some people imagine that they should only get natural reactions or people dancing in natural ways, which to me is very dumb, because all, almost all of my images, I ask them to do something dumb, uh, put their hands in the air, smile really bad, either scream or dance, because uh, first of all, you, you, I feel more comfortable having the permission of people to be taken pictures of, because then they won't hide away when the flash goes on. Uh, so when I ask, like, can I take a picture? Uh, and they pose, I'm like, ah, it's too boring, take your hands in the air, start dancing. Then they're more comfortable in front of the camera instead of me coming from nowhere. And then, because they'll get super self-conscious. So tell them what to do. It's covered in my other video as well, but it really helps and it keeps, it doesn't make your pictures unnatural. Stop with this. I get that there's a type of art that is, just don't tell people what to do. Further on, if somebody in a group of like three or four people don't want to be taken pictures of, don't take a picture if the other people says it's okay while the person being there, because they might be holding together and one of them go like this, then don't take the picture because it's uncomfortable and it's res it's a lack of respect. So either be like, yeah, can you just fuck off so I can take a picture, obviously while smiling, and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah no worries, and the other, one, other ones will pose. Or you can go up and say, uh, hey, uh, you look great, why do we, don't you want the picture, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of time that actually works. I'm like, bro, you look so great, you've dressed up, your hair is amazing, don't you want the picture? Uh, I can show it to you afterwards. I would argue like 50% of the time that works. Uh, and if they then says no again, I'm like, no issues, uh, blah, blah, blah. And some people even come up to me earlier, earlier in the evening say, like, I don't want any pictures. And then I just say, I can't promise not having the camera at you, but I'll remember, I'll try to remember your face and you'll have to talk to me later. Because it's not something I can guarantee, especially in like a group setting or something. Uh, so some people come up and I'll have to delete the pictures immediately after taking group photo for some reason. They're like, I don't want any images online. And then I just delete everything and just try to mentally remember. Luckily, there's only like maybe two people during an entire evening that says no. So it's fairly easy to remember. But if I see them, uh, I'll just try to turn the camera another way or make sure they're very far in the background of a crowd. Next one is also covered in the previous video, but it's be respectful to drunk people. Don't act like you're any cooler than them because you're not just because you're sober. You're not above anyone. Uh, even though you're like professional, people talk like, oh, you're so lucky you get to be. Just don't boast about what you're doing. And people, f I guess by that get gives you more respect. I don't know. Uh, Never fight your way through security. Uh, I've had issues with security a lot of times. Just the fact that they don't know me, I don't have an official badge and I'll have to talk my way through or even, uh, even uh, or ma mainly find people that know me. Because uh, it's those four nightclubs have the same workers in a way. So I'll have to either go back and tell them to tell them to let me in or call the boss or something. It's been all right, but don't be a douche because you're gonna go in and out those doors all day. And if they don't like you, they won't let you pass freely in the same way as if you're like, hey, it's you, okay, just pass by, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so furthermore, uh, obviously like uh, ethical problems is don't take pictures of only women because it's nasty and people notice. Uh, and uh, don't take pictures of two drunk people. Sometimes I will take the picture because the friends are like, oh, take a picture of this guy. And I just want to send it to the client. So be, you, you have to judge if the person on the image would be comfortable having the image online, which, makes if, uh, which means if their face is super weird, unnaturally weird, uh, they're definitely too drunk or they're flashing their tits or doing just don't send them away because you will, I guarantee you, you will have like a hundred images to send. So one extra image is not that big a deal. One less image is not that big a deal. And then there's uh, for smaller venues or bars like karaoke bars and stuff. I, 
it's not comfortable for the guests uh, if you stay by the dance floor the entire night. So say you have an hour where you are supposed to shoot, go in, check, take your first round, ask people for images, uh, stand by the dance floor for a few, four, four or five minutes, take some pictures and then either leave or go all the way back so you can see from afar. Because uh, if there's a photographer by besides you in your regular day-to-day -day life, just imagine any other day, you would feel tense all the time because you know that any second this guy could take up his camera. And we, a lot of the time they won't come back, come to you and say they don't want the picture taken unless it's a super big deal, but they don't want their picture taken while they're screaming into a microphone. Does that, does that make sense? Like 40 year olds? Some might, if you take the picture, you might like show them afterwards, and the, but don't stay by the dance floor or the, the stage all the time. Go back and forth so people are very aware when you're there, which is fine. Like, oh, he might take a picture right now and then you'll leave. Because at you'll get uh, you'll come to a point where you're actually a disturbing factor in like the flow of the entire bar or the entire like venue. So it's a fine line between how much you should be there and how much images. But at the end, just you can't you can't stay by the same group of people for too long. Yeah, fuck, I'm talking a lot. And as I have written here, it says you can very easily ruin the mood on the dance floor. So avoid that. So how do you get in contact and how do you get the certain gigs or jobs? Well, to be honest, I don't have that much uh, experience in that field. I'll tell you how I got it and why it's, I would argue, the most sustainable way to do it. But it's obviously a family and friends. Uh, workplace, uh, talking to people, reaching out on social media, but I can't honestly say I've done that. Uh, the first job on the nightclub I'm still shooting today uh, is through a nightclub I already worked in. And then I was like, I do photography, I can bring my camera, I'll do it for free or for cheap. And it was the, <clears throat> it was the worst images I've ever delivered, but he was super happy. Uh, and I uh, gradually evolved, got more confident, and so on and so on. So so the way I got my biggest gig, which is four different nightclubs a couple times a month, or at least it used to be a couple times a month, uh, was four nightclubs under the same umbrella, I guess you can call it. And it's a funny story, actually. So if you've come this far, you can hear this as well. Uh, the way I got this was by talking shit to a person that was a guard at the festival I was working at uh, and I was just bored because I had time off so I was just talking to this I would argue she was a stranger at the time uh, and there were people walking past all the time because it was a festival area and it was raining so we had these pink uh, uh, plastic bags over us uh, looking like uh, the Teletubbies or whatever anyways uh, this uh, random photographer went by and uh, I just went, hey, did you get anything in this weather? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and basically out of nowhere, he went like, nah, but I know you and I have some jobs uh, that I'm quitting. Uh, do you want them? Uh, and that took me a few seconds to process, but he, he knew my name. He knew my pictures that I had taken at the previous club I was working at. Uh, he knew I was free, basically. Uh, and he was quitting his job at this umbrella company doing nightclubs in the different town. And he said, bas he said straight out, like, uh, if you want it, I'll recommend you. And if I recommend you, you'll get the job. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Send me a text or something. And I, we exchanged emails or something. And within, uh, I think like one or two weeks, I got in contact with this umbrella all these nightclubs and was hired basically, or for a test shoot where I over delivered as fuck. Uh, and they hired me for the next months. So that was super surreal because I didn't know this guy, uh, but through Facebook and some local groups, I had, I guess, posted and my website was online. So that was sick. So basically getting your work out there through family, friends, Facebook, I don't know, is the way to go or at least from my part. 
uh, I have tried to reach out to individual uh, bars and nightclubs in the same town and it didn't really work. Just cold calling them going like, I am a photographer, this is my portfolio, which is quite a big one at the, at the moment. Uh, I shoot a lot of nightclubs in your area. I've been shooting for a while. Hit me up if you're interested in cooperating. And one of them had an extremely bad photographer. <laughs> and they were like, no, we have a regular one. Uh, we don't need another one. Thanks for reaching out. And let me just say that was a reason I reached out. <laughs> uh, and someone just didn't respond. So, so cold calling people hasn't worked for me. So talk to people, I guess, how to get in contact. I really can't help you. And then I was at this <clears throat> birthday party and this guy had a company who needed a photographer and the next weekend uh, and we just casually came in chat, started chatting and I got work there as well. So it's just about talking to people and letting them know that you do photography. That's how, how I do it. And then, uh, Fairly big one, set expectations pretty low and then over deliver. That's usually what I do. So, so well, the first one of the companies expect like 40 images from the venue and I delivered a hundred for the first time and they were super happy, super pleased. Uh, the images were great. I got a lot of training in that special uh, specific venue. I spent the whole night. Uh, they were super happy They they hired me and then I obviously started delivering less. So I would spend less time there, uh, but still then they knew my potential and the images and that I wasn't solely after the money, if that makes sense. So the next one is what to shoot. Uh, quite, I wouldn't say obvious one, but it's people having fun. It's people dancing, it's people screaming, hugging, kissing, jumping, talking, uh, crowd shots, uh, scenes. Uh, I would usually, I'd shoot more outside the dance floor than on the dance floor by the bar, waiting for their alcohol. They're usually bored, uh, sitting uh, at the table. They're sometimes awkward situations or like awkward conversations and every distraction is a blessing. So those are often willing, people just standing around is often ready to be taken a picture of. By the entrance where people come and go, people are often willing. In the queue, it's a bit of a gray area, I would argue. Some are not drunk enough and super conscious about themselves, especially since they're in the queue. It's For some, that's a big deal and, uh, and for others, it's not. So I had some great shots there and some awkward interactions. So you'll have to figure that out yourself. It's probably different from bar to bar and place to place what people you meet. Uh, but basically everything, talk to people, scream to people, you'll figure it out yourself. Uh, you'll usually be able to get into VIP areas as well to get closer to the stages, to the DJs and stuff. I uh, know, I find DJs to be the worst people to photograph, not because they don't want to or don't look good. It's just the lighting there is usually so bad that you'll have to really experiment with the flash and bouncing and slow shutter speed and stuff. So I've had a few good ones, but I don't know. You can't stay there forever either, so you'll have to figure that out yourself, I think. Now this next one is what to deliver, which I believe is a quite fun, interesting part of this, this profession. At first, don't deliver pictures that you don't believe are good. So at the start, I would deliver, just to get my numbers up, I would deliver like half good, bad images. And it would usually be the ones being posted first. The people you're delivering to have no fucking clue what is good and what is bad. Uh, and they'll just post, they usually tend to post the worst image of your 50 image collection for some reason. And then they'll tag you, which is the worst. So uh, avoid adding pictures that you do not like or do not want uh, posted. Uh, also be uh, clear that they can't edit the images unless they can. My employer, employers have a, a tendency to add some black and white filters and some bad uh, pic collage edits and it's such a small thing and they don't tag me anymore so I've stopped caring. 
because I don't hold that much pride in my images and it's very obvious that they have been edited after they've been taken. So it's a gray area. I I would send the, with the images like, do not edit these images under any circumstance. Uh, you can add the logo and text, which is fine, but not the image. And they would just completely destroy them on Instagram with their filters. So uh, it's... Uh, it's something you have to figure out yourself. I wouldn't be too cautious about it at the start. Anyways, then it's like don't deliver images that you don't think the people would be comfortable having online, obviously. Uh, it's also not dangerous to deliver several images of the same subject. So if you have a group of people posting, they'll have like three different variations of that. and. <laughs> That again, if, if the people posting the images are a bit more professional when it comes to that, which is some of my employers, they'll be more able to pick out what image fits best for their purpose uh, or what social media they'll put them and they can use them several times. Uh, so I'll usually just add them some extra, sometimes to add numbers, but my numbers are pretty high anyways, but it makes gives them more flexibility. I also have agreed uh, beforehand with some uh, with one employer that I won't crop the images uh, that much so that they can crop them later for Instagram because I shoot all my images horizontal in a regular, I don't know, 16 by 10, 3 by 2 format. And for Instagram, it's 4 by 5. So they'll have an easier time cropping and getting everyone in frame if I just leave some space around them. So that's also something you can come to agreement with, but I wouldn't... First, it makes your images look better on social media because you deliver them worse. Uh, and then uh, the employer would be more happy as well because it's more like a cooperation between all of them. It's also super different from employer to employer. Uh, this certain case, it's one person in charge of posting on social media. So it's a lot easier to cooperate with, uh, with those people. Uh... uh never have a personal signature on the images. Just that's, uh, if you post images on Instagram and you have signatures of a wooden landscape on your Instagram page, stop doing that. Nobody is stealing your images at all. I could, some people, uh, for example, my uncle would post fishing, uh, homemade fishing things and those would get stolen, but those are super specific, creative, unique images but yours aren't, stop using signatures unless like you, the image is super high resolution on the website and the image is extremely good. I never use signatures anymore. Yeah, before uh, the shoot day, ask for the logo of the company if they want you to add it before you're starting the editing process so the editing process is as fast as possible because that's also taken into account. I usually deliver within one to two days uh, which isn't that bad at all. Having the logo before the shoot day uh, leaves all of the trouble with emailing back and forth after the shoot day, delaying your delivery time, giving you a worse impression. And some uh, most people don't tag me at all. I never get tagged in my images that I post because I'm paid. That's why I'm paid. Uh, some people do, it's fine. How to deliver the images is also quite a big issue for some people. I find it quite a big hassle as well because most people, club owners, are not that well driven in computers which makes them unable to download certain images in high quality. I would have employers like screenshot their Google Drive folder, it would be a mess. So I still use Google Drive because the people I'm working with, with have adapted to that and it's the easiest and cheapest way. I've found. Uh, so I just upload everything to a folder. I usually call it the club name and then I have like dates for each folder so they can find all of their older images uh, by going there. I also pay, I think it's five dollars a month or something for extra storage on Google Drive. Works a charm. Uh, just giving, just give them clear instructions on how to save the image and not screenshot the image uh, so then don't mess up the quality, which they usually do anyways. Uh, but uh, Google Drive is okay. It's not perfect. It glitches. It's slow. 
I, I wouldn't really recommend it, but that's what I'm working with. When it comes to payment, this is also a bit of a gray area, where to trust, when to trust. Uh, from my previous, uh, the first gig gigs I had with the employer, uh, I would either get cash or like uh, PayPal or whatever it's used in your country because it was so low amounts of money or they would just write hours as if I was working. Uh, and I would just take the pictures and then tell them what I would take in payment. And it was a trust process because I had already been working with them for two years. So I, of course, they were going to pay me uh, I, I, according to what we had agreed on earlier. When it comes to these newer ones where you don't know them, they're a bit far away, they're a bit distant, doesn't always answer your emails. I have been very strict on getting either a contract in place or the uh, payment done before the images are sent, just because that's how it's supposed to be. Not that I don't, not that I necessarily don't trust they won't pay me, but because it's a bad habit habit for them to not pay me when they are s supposed to. Uh, so over time, obviously trust came into the picture and blah blah blah. But I would first I will have them pay me on advance, and then I'll just make sure they at least answer my emails and are clear on the payment. The times I would bump my prices. I'd be like, this is okay, and they wouldn't answer, and I wouldn't deliver the images before they agreed. Because sometimes you just know you're going there, uh, going this Saturday and this Saturday and this Saturday, and through those, that month you'll go up in price or whatever. You need to be in constant contact with the people uh, responsible for you. So uh, don't be too big a deal. I would... Yeah... Getting paid beforehand is also a bit like difficult. Now we're really closing into the end of this video. It's been a hell of a video to record, but I have a few things uh, or a point that's called problems I have encountered, which I would go through real quickly. There's also for some reason people wondering if I'm just a regular guy with a camera, uh, which also builds into all of these professional things or, or stuff or acting that people think I'm just some guy in the town with a camera uh, taking pictures of random of people. So that's also something I don't know how to fix that. I would say half of the people I'm encountering is like, what are you doing with the camera in this club? Why are you here? Uh, I'm working for the club. What the hell? What? Ha? Huh? So that's surprising. Uh, and some people also also don't want to be taken pictures of because they think I'm press. They think they'll end up in the local newspaper. And this is mainly in the older like bars because it's not uncommon for press or journalists to go into bars. So just clearing that out as well. Yeah, people think I'm press sometimes. I just tell them I'm not. And suddenly they're super happy to be taken pictures of. Uh, you also have to tell them uh, usually when they are like, where are the images going? I'll just go like, I don't know. I'm just sending them away. Or I'll go like, I guess it's social media. Because at the start, I didn't know. Now I know a bit more about where the images are ending up. But that makes, for some reason, the people less concerned when you're like, I don't know where the images are going. I, I'm just working, uh, acting super dumb. And they're like, ah, oh, that's dumb as well. Let's pose. And people are super happy. I don't know. Uh, lights ruin the pictures. This is like the DJ booth where they have like strong blue lights or green lights for some reason. It's very common. I really hate that. And that's when using your flash to overpower those lights is very important. Uh, yeah, so that's the thing. Alcohol, I never drink ever. People offer me drinks all the time. I have done it once. It was like a beer and it was somebody I knew and they were like, take a sip. I was like, oh, okay. I don't know, just obviously don't drink while working. That's unprofessional as fuck, but yeah. Uh, people want the pictures sent to them. So this I handle in a very efficient way, which is I keep my uh, business card uh, in my pockets. And if people are like, oh, those images are so good, I'll just hand them the business card when they ask for the images and say, you can contact me, I won't contact you, and they never contact me. 
So instead of either, maybe they can follow me on Instagram because that works as well. But I, I never like, oh, I'll need to get your number or, or I'll text you. Let them find your Instagram or follow you or just give them the business card if you have a uh, smaller amount, uh, less time because uh, they never get the pictures. It's happened once that a picture has been published and they sent me an email where like, oh, this is such a cool image of me and my friend. Can you send it in high resolution? And I usually just do that. Yeah, uh, for the, like the bigger venues where they're very strict on their logos, I wouldn't do that. But for the smaller bars or local communities, it doesn't matter that much. Does that make sense? I guess so. And the last thing I have written here is understand lighting. So all of this comes down to being comfortable in the club where you are uh, and then understanding the tools you are working with. And this, both of these things are is something you'll get with time and experience. And that really sucks to hear, but your images will suck at the start. Uh, but that's just how it is. Uh, I'll leave a link to a very impressive video on how to use a flash, which is like five minutes long, which completely revol revolutionized my flash photography. Uh, I'll leave it there just so uh, you can get that as well. And then you will have a better head start than me. And we're finally at the end. I hope I didn't waste one hour and 15 minutes of your time. It's currently two uh, at night where I live. I feel I still missed a lot of things. There's a lot of topics, topics I could cover, uh, like how I edit and stuff, but this video just turned out to be too long as it is. So if there's something you feel is missing, something you would like me to do, that will be my next idea for a video. So come up with some suggestions, maybe I'll cover it. Uh, and I'll see you some other night. Yeah, you should also subscribe. If you're watching the end of the end, then we're basically best friends. So press the subscribe button. Maybe unsubscribe when I have a million subscribers. Or not. Yeah, thank you. Oh, fuck. I don't know how this is going to be sustainable. Yeah.